Aces and Adventures is out and I wanted to share with you just one of the decks that I like to play. Uh, it's a bit more advanced. Uh, you won't be able to use it right off the bat. However, it's a lot of fun and it might uh, get your creative juices going to see it. Now, I normally would play on fall when I'm just playing winter if I'm going for a challenge. We're going to do spring, which is the low level, just so that we can focus on the deck itself and I'm not having to explain what all of the encounter and enemy conditions and everything is. I must be so we're going to go with opportunity. This is the uh, golden level one trait. Uh, opportunity, as we're about to see, is basically going to fire a little attack at an enemy right here whenever I summon or unsummon. So already this guy, I mean, this is, this is not going to be very challenging because I am a high level, but I could use honor duel, which let's just take a look at it. We're going to put honor duel in. This immediately deals one damage, but it dealt two damage because it's plus one damage from single card attacks. And opportunity is essentially launching a single card attack at adjacent targets to my summon. So there you go. Very simple, very straightforward in this build. Um, we will go to the group encounter because we have an AOE card that I'm going to want to try to use. Um, I have to be able to, rem so broken bargain is interesting because if I summon it, and I will, it's not going to do anything. Uh, I mean, it, it, this this guy has two attacks, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and pop it here so that I can deal damage to both of these guys. But it's done it's done nothing so far. It's gonna deal three damage when I remove it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pop a little bit of damage on this guard here, just so that we're weakening him, weakening him up, and that'll do it. I'm gonna try not to kill these guys if I can if I can help it. Uh, <laughs> well, looks like I will kill these guys. At least that guy. Let's see if this guy, I'm going to throw, I'm, I'm going to throw the jack at, on purpose here to tie him. Deal no damage because I'm going to want to summon. Yeah, spacing is perfect. So spacing is an ability that's actually just as it, the name implies, it's spacing. It's just going to give you space between you and the enemy. And that's useful for a lot of reasons. In the case of opportunity, it's useful because it's going to launch that opportunity attack. But when I removed that uh, card there, when you can bring up your cards just by clicking him, when I, when I broke that bargain, what ended up happening was I dealt three damage to all enemies that remained, so that guy got toasted. So we get a little item there, crystallized smoke, that's gonna let us cancel an attack. And now this guy is a little bit, he's a little bit more of a challenge. So let's bring in Fenrir. This is one of my favorite summons. Um, he's going to basically deal one, that little bite there, one point of damage whenever I deal a point of damage. So that's really cool. And uh, we're going to go ahead and throw this 10. And that already dealt the two damage based on my Raven's Flight plus two and it dealt one damage because of Fenrir. And now we're going to finish this guy off with a takedown. So takedown is an attack that only works to targets adjacent to your summon. Now this is when the build comes into play here. You got cover. So cover is suffering minus one combat damage from non-adjacent enemies. That works for group encounters. So for instance, these salamanders, I don't have to summon anything. This guy, will deal one point less damage to me. But I'm gonna summon my uh, Raven here just so that I take one point less damage from both of these guys. And we will just, I could actually, and I will show you, um, Raven's Flight, once it gets more advanced, you can actually chain it. So if you defeat the enemy, <clears throat> you actually get to chain Raven's Flight so I could fire it again. And I will against this guy, he's down to two. And so now, we are going to, look, I'm gonna lose this. However, cover causes me to take no damage. So very powerful build here, both defensively and offensively. It's a really good build um, once you have the cards to do it. Uh, here, I'm just gonna finish them off with a Raven's Flight. Um, the Skull Raven will give me one more card. So we're doing real good. Um, let's go to the, well, I don't really have, anything to do with the card shrine, but but we're gonna go there simply because I don't need health. Uh, I'm a level 30 right now on, on spring, so this is pretty easy. 
I'm in easy town. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add a wild range. It's, you could you could do uh, a wild suit or a wild range when you have low cards like this. I'm gonna do one to the ten and one to the nine. Why not? So now I can actually do a full house, and we'll we'll do it just to look at it. Let's let's do it. Well, actually, this guy's gonna force me to break it here. Um, actually, let's do it like this for no reason. Cancel his attack and throw a full house at him. Just for fun, just because we can. And uh, not, the, not the best course of action, what I just did there, but it's just for fun here. We're, we're just messing around. New deck goofing. Um, <clears throat> so, I could definitely beat him with this Fenrir. I've also got a uh, Broken Bargain. Um, I, I'm gonna go ahead and do a Broken Bargain. Just cycle this card with Raven's Flight. Uh, sometimes even if, you know, obviously I'm dealing one damage, but you just use your hero abilities to cycle cards and you don't always have to attack. So now I have Sacrifice, which is already going to beat him, right? Because Sacrifice is going to remove my uh, summon to cancel uh, an incoming attack. So I'm going to do that. And Broken Bargain is going to take care of the rest. Oh, this is nice. So Adder Stone, discard an ability to heal one HP. So we're going to be very healthy boys here um let's do a well we can do a stock but we'll, we'll we'll first throw a card just to cycle this reload cycle that and stock <coughs> stock is going to draw four and discard three abilities so it's a good way in case you need to and sometimes you do in this deck it's one of the weaknesses of this deck you want to have a summon. So I'm going to want this spacing for sure. Uh, I probably would want this East Powder Star. I'm not going to need a Broken Bargain right now because I'm against a boss here. Um, not really an AoE encounter. Takedown is good to have. Sacrifice is good to have. Uh, but the spacing has Sacrifice sort of built into it. So we'll drop Sacrifice and I'm probably not going to risk the East Powder Star here. I might end the encounter with it. So we'll drop Fenrir, even though, of course, Fenrir is great. We'll get him back later. And so we'll drop Spacing. That's going to keep us a little bit safe. I could do a takedown, deal three points of damage. Let's go ahead and do it. <coughs> Not the smartest move, but, you know, we drew, we drew an ace and a joker. We're all right. So see, I'm not even going to bother. I could, I could beat him with the ace here and just do one point of damage. Just for fun, I'm going to throw that three cycle it get the cover remove this we're gonna bring in our east powder star now because we got this in the bag and uh sea stone arrowheads i'm gonna use it here just so you can see it um it, it actually is a really nice thing whenever you deal damage including a diamond you can actually cancel the trait of an enemy so flying which would normally um didn't really come into effect here would make it so that i can't damage him with cards under 10 is gone and this will bring us home. You've triggered my trap card and it's all over. Okay, so now we've got one more level up. We're gonna do it and we're gonna... I would normally take vampirism, uh, but since I'm doing... A, it, this is such a low level encounter, I'm gonna go with headhunter, which will just let my face cards do one more point of damage. <clears throat> so this is great to have. Um, it's not the right time to use it <laughs> to, you know right now I'm, i have to to beat these two guys and you got a berserker here but this broken bargain if i could trigger it will kill both of them i just don't have any way of triggering it just yet so i might want to hold on to it i'm just going to put it here in defense so again broken bargain doesn't cost anything so it's good to have just in defense and then i'm going to cast my uh, summon mastery, which is going to reduce the cost of all of my summons by one, so long as I have that buff. And you can have one buff at a time. So berserking, right? So here he's going to deal two points of damage, even though I have that cover because of berserking. But we're not going to worry about it. And if ever you want to know what something does, enemies with berserking deal plus one attack damage per each point of missing HP. I'd already heard him. So we're not going to let him do any damage this time, right? But that's what Berserking does. Um, this guy's a club hunter, so if I throw a club at him, he's actually going to deal one point of damage with that. I'm going to throw a spade so he doesn't trigger that. 
So now we've got takedowns. We got two takedowns. This is the really beefy takedown. So um, that Ravager is a done deal. I mean, I could beat him with this queen thanks to my headhunter. And I get this back. And now we got the beefy takedown. I never had to trigger that broken bargain. We just used that as a defensive measure. Um, we'll go up this way towards, and you can plot your path by right clicking like this if you if you want to. We're going towards this equipment. When we get this consumable along the way, draw three abilities, that's excellent for this deck because really um, maintaining abilities is hard for this deck. We'll, we'll do it right away. Draw into those three abilities. And, uh, you know, this is this is overkill, but we're, we're just going to... Let, let, let me just bring up my map real quick. And, and there is going to be a group encounter, so I'm going to actually hold this broken bargain. I, I, could, I could use it, but I, I'm not going to yet. Um, instead, what I'm going to do is spacing to draw one. New ability, deal one point of damage. Bring in Fenrir, deal another two points of damage. And then we're going to just throw probably... Probably just this. Just, just to cycle the cards. We got a takedown here. I don't think we need to use it. Let's wait. We do not. And so here I'm just going to cycle cards again. Uh, yeah, we'll throw the six. <coughs> and thanks to cover, I'm just cycling. Uh, I can throw this two, bring them down to one. I can, of course, beat them with this takedown. Uh, one, two, three, four, five cards. We're getting close to our max hand size, so I think we will beat them with the takedown. We get plus one max health. That's good for me because I, I can heal. And we're going to go into this group encounter in which I am going to use Broken Bargain and Spacing to just absolutely end these guys. That's it. It's just that easy. And we'll get an item. Ooh, Trifoil Shield. That's excellent. Now we can block with clubs and cover. We're going to be hard to beat. So I am going to drop this East Powder Star <coughs> right here on this quag hag. She done. She dead. It's over. We're not even going to bother with her. Um, and I will throw just a just a little just a little hit for this guy. It doesn't make a difference. I'm just cycling. She, he's going to get healed. So here she goes. She heals. She thinks she's going to attack. She's wrong. She's going to die. And I didn't get a club, unfortunately, so I will block with the ace. And so here we go. See, I have no summon in my hand. And this is when things get a little bit hairy with this deck because I don't have any way to trigger all of my good stuff. But I've got a club in my hand. I've got a pair. And he just throwing a, a 10. So we're, o we're okay. We're going to be all right. So finish him off this round. He's done. We're just going to throw this 10 at him. That's it. And we move into a more legitimate fight again, you know, without a summon, but we've got two clubs, so we are good. We're going to throw this with Headhunter to deal three points of damage. And I'm going to go ahead and use Adderstone on one of these, probably just on the sacrifice, since I don't have anything to sacrifice to keep myself at full health. This guy's got a double attack, so he will attack twice. This time I will block with the club. And their trifoiled shield will take care of things. Now we got spacing and we're safe. We're very, very safe now. We got the good takedown and we got two little takedowns. Let's use the good takedown because this guy's a big boy. All right. So now we're out of level ups. You can only level up three times. I'm going to get a piece of equipment. Wild suit a card until end of turn. That's excellent to have. And with that trifoiled shield, that means I can turn any card into a club once. So I'm not going to be easy to hit. We'll throw spacing at this guy. We've got a stock, so uh, we're not going to run out of summons. That's what that card's really there for. Um, but we're going to go ahead and throw a couple of uh, attacks at this guy because he's a big boy. And we'll keep spacing there. And that's not going to work, my friend. And that headhunter will double our damage. So here I could go ahead and cycle out spacing, but I like to keep, uh, as you saw, I, I ran out of summons before. I like to keep a summon on hand, so let's keep that summon. 
Instead, what we can do is throw a king-based uh, Raven's Flight for some good damage and let him bring it on. All right, so here this will cause me to um, lose my spacing. I don't have to worry about the clubs yet because spacing cancels that. Deals one point of damage with opportunity. And now, of course, I can just bring it home with a regular old shot here. And now we're going to a place where we're going to want this broken bargain, I'll tell you for sure. Good night. And we'll finish him off, actually. So that is how you deal with that. Um, so what I did there, just again, you can bring up these cards if you um, want to look at what I just did. I threw in the broken bargain and then I broke the bargain with spacing, dealing three points of damage to everyone. Every time that I was putting one in or taking one out, thanks to opportunity, I'm dealing one damage. So that's five damage to all the adjacents. And I brought it home with a Raven's Flight, pretty straightforward. Um, what I'm going to do now, since I've got a, a Joker in hand, is I'm gonna go to the card shrine and I can create a copy of this Joker. And now I got another Joker. Now we're gonna go to this elite encounter and this is gonna be a little bit more challenging, but you know, I am still level 30. So not, not that challenging, not that challenging. This is gonna hurt. We'll use, we'll actually do this. So, so look, I, I do wanna, I do wanna show this. Okay, so this will deal two points of damage with two aces, right? But you gotta, you gotta think about it. So I got a, a headhunter here. If I bring this down and I bring in a couple of kings here, which I can just select the values of, now I'm doing four damage. Now this guy's done. Now this guy's dead because of headhunter. So, you know, worth taking your time sometimes and just considering what you're going to do. Um, this guy's got second phase, so he's got a good amount of HP. We're going to probably just, probably just beat this guy and throw in some spacing here between us, just to, just to stay totally safe. I got this honor duel, which we're gonna use later, but um, not gonna worry about it yet. Is this my wild? It is, I can bring it in as a jack and hit him for three points of damage. That's pretty nice. <clears throat> okay, so that's not gonna do anything for him. And I'm going to now put in my Skull Raven. And we're going to plink him. I might throw, actually, well, these eights won't do anything to him because of flying. So flying, things don't take uh, things with flight don't take damage from cards under 10. Let's let's take a look at that. Let's see if, if we can see that. There he goes, flying. But I did cycle those two eights. Not that I necessarily wanted to, but I just wanted to show you what flying does in case you're unfamiliar with it. So here we got a club and a heart. Cover plus the trifoils club means I'm taking two less damage, which means no damage at all. Now I've got, uh, let's, let, I, I kind of want to use this honor duel just for fun. Okay, so let's bring this honor duel in. Only single card combat is allowed now. Now, luckily I'm pretty good at single card combat as the hunter and single card combat is going to deal one more damage. So that's very beneficial to my build. Um, I'm going to try to see if I can force this to happen. So let's take a look. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to cycle some cards here just for the, for the sake of it. I could, I could definitely beat him. I'll do, I'll do one more one more shot here since he's still alive let's see okay no so uh, what i wanted to show you is um and and here i i will go ahead and do this so that i i don't take damage and he will live another day because i'm not going to shoot him i'm gonna let him attack again uh did he no okay so if he draws a pair the pair is going to be ignored he's only going to be able to throw high cards at me that's the nice part about uh this uh, honor duel. So I cannot take a pair, triple, four of a kind, doesn't matter. Um, so it's very useful for that, for those purposes. I couldn't throw, let, let's do that and just, just to see it. Um, oh, well, he died from 
the <laughs> reactions there, but I couldn't throw my three twos. So that, that's the downside, right? So you have to decide if you're going to be a build that's gonna throw uh, multi-card hands, or if you're gonna throw single card hands, um, you're going to want to, to go differently. So here I would take one damage. This is what I'm going to finally use my uh, hard sap prism to block it with a club. Finally, came in handy. Okay, let's let's just let's just go through the broken bargain chain here. Um, then we'll do this. And then we do this. And we go to sleep. We just go to sleep on this guy. He triggers his trap card, and he's gone. We choose equipment randomly. This is a great thing to have. The ring of the fire on plus one maximum hand size. That means this hand here. And I can sacrifice one health to draw two abilities and two cards. So pretty nice, pretty nice. Here we're going to want to do a big old broken bargain, I think. We're gonna do that. And we're gonna stock so that I can make sure that I have a summon for my next fight. We'll keep the Fenrir's. We don't need a reload. We're going to withdraw our bargain. And that'll do it. That'll do it right there for sure. Okay. So now I'm going to go through the merchant to see if he's got anything that I really like. Tourmaline shield is really, really nice. I've already got a ring of the fire on. I could double up. Um, this is probably worth it. To be honest, this is just such a good card, but I'm already kind of rampaging here. So we'll, we'll just get a refreshment to be safe, just to be safe. And we'll keep the good Fenrir. We'll just drop that. Uh-huh. So here we're going to do just a simple broken bargain. We don't have to get fancy. We really don't. <coughs> All right. So here we go. We're going into the boss now. We got a we got a little Fenrir and a big Fenrir, and we got some broken bargains. I'm gonna keep this broken bargain around, I think. Though it the, though it might be nice to just start putting the hurt on these giants. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Let's let's start the party off with a broken bargain, and then I'm gonna go the safe route by putting Fenrir on this side, and we're going to keep that. Um, we'll go ahead and do a. Ring of the fire on here to bring in some cards. Yep, 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 yep. Takedowns. A raven flight that will trigger into another raven flight. Not a bad thing. And we will just cycle this card on this little safe attack Cyclops back here because he has safe attack. That means he won't take damage when I defend successfully, hopefully, against him. Um, here I could definitely beat this guy and uh, deal three points of damage, so I will. And with this guy, I can't deal any damage, but he's not gonna deal any damage to me because I've got cover. So, you know, no big deal either way. Here, we're going to take this guy down because he's got a lot of HP. We don't really care for him too much. And we'll do this to him too. Uh-huh. And dare I take another? Well, let's do it this way. All right. Come on, what do we got? What do we got? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. All right. Now I'm making it interesting for myself. Because we're going into Invernus, and we don't even have what we need. But we are going to make what we need. Now, this is the tricky part with Invernus. You've got Crystallized Wrath here. And this Crystallized Wrath makes it so that he will deal double damage. If I defeat that Crystallized Wrath, which I which I can do, Invernus will not deal double damage. So I think that's what I'm going to want to do. I'm going to bring this in, get the party started. He's down to four. I've got a takedown. I've got my uh, four damage from all of the combination of things that we have. So already I can already I can basically uh, cut this guy's damage down by half and I have. However, I'm exposed because I don't have cover because I put Fenrir on this side. I do, however, have a Ring of the Fire on, which allows me to draw more. And in this case, will allow me to draw two Broken Bargains, both of which I will put on this side 
and I'm holding a sacrifice. So what what that means is very bad news for Invernus. I'm not gonna lie to you. This is really not working out for him. Normally he's a big boss, but I've got sacrifice here and I've got one more flight. And this will be his death. So no matter what he does, I've got sacrifice here. I will sacrifice it, break the bargain, and defeat Invernus. And that is how the summoning build of Ravenmire works. There are many builds that you can build for him. Um, he can go rapid fire. He's, he can be very versatile. Um, but I think that the summoning is just a lot of fun. Um, here I have uh, just sort of, by the way, I'll show you this option because not many people might know about it. Uh, pay no attention to those. Um, so one thing, the playing card deck that I was using, you can set it here. I've got an extra setting here, but you, you will have this one traditional. So if you like the deck of playing cards that I'm using, go ahead. Um, if you like having your animations go quickly when you're leveling up, you can use quick mana vial animations. That's under game. And the other one was under cosmetic. So that's why this is going very quickly. I got a plus two Raven. Pretty good. I might add that to my deck here after I'm done. So that's the fast version. Everything is happening pretty quick. We got a plus one East Powder Star. This is this is pretty cool. Um, there's actually one version of the East Powder Star, uh, which uh, is going to a lot, like have a chance to remain in combat. So that's really good for my build. There it is. Actually, we got lucky and we got it. Look at that. Um, so I will add this to my deck because um, it is something that uh, is very useful for a build that you want to keep uh, something between you and the enemy for cover. Obviously, it's only a chance to do it, but I think it's worthwhile. So we'll go to the summoning deck that I built here, and we're going to go to East Powder Star plus two. We'll just click it to replace the lower level version of itself. And that's it. I'm still building into that deck, but uh, it's, it's getting pretty good. It's getting pretty saucy. As you can see, it, it cruises through spring, no problem. So here I'm leveling up my Enchantress. One nice thing, in case you didn't know, is that you can actually level up any character based on the experience you get. So if you've got a favorite build of a favorite class, you, you're not forced to go play the other class to build into it. You can build it while just playing your favorite uh, class and then eventually once this enchantress is maybe somewhere 14th you know uh, something higher than that um, she'll be very good to use uh, one of the builds that I'd like to show off next is going to be the buff debuff build for the enchantress mostly debuff um, that is really cool once you get one of her traits that is called dominance so if I want to look at what I have yet I don't have dominance yet that's the uh, gold version of the level one so that's the next trait that I'll get from leveling up. So um, that that one will allow me to deal one point of damage when I'm taking, when I'm putting on, uh, it's similar to opportunity actually, when I'm putting on a debuff on an enemy and when I'm taking it off, I deal one point of damage. So it's really fun. You can cycle through that with Eldritch snaps and you're, you're doing a bunch of cool combinations. And maybe I'll show that next time. But uh, I hope that this sparked your creativity and gave you an idea of just what's possible. Uh, there's a lot of builds for all of the classes. We've made sure, that, <clears throat> excuse me, um, at least there is about three different options that are very substantially different for each class. So I invite you to explore. There's probably more than that, but, but we made sure there was at least three. And uh, one of the builds, of course, for the hunter is the summoner type. So that's what we saw today, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.